Hey guys, what's up? How are you? Welcome back. It's your host, Hebot, and this is another episode of Toys in My Closet, brought to you by Misala Productions. And today we're going to take a look at the um, brand new, well, actually the Wave 1 and Wave 2 for um, the 7 inch scale Jazz wear right um wicked cool toys halo infinite figures right and to be honest it's from the halo universe altogether so as you see is eight figures in total so far these are seven in scale and you know uh they come with some accessories with movable parts uh from some hands uh, even some portraits for some and uh, some, you know, weapons and accessories. And as you see, we'll start off with none other over here uh, the, with, than with the... Uh, uh, let me see if I can get it adjusted here in the screen. The Spartan. The Spartan MK. All right, Spartan MK. Uh, I want to say 7, right? That's one, and then you see a picture in, of the figure in a promotional shot in the back. It says part of the Halo Spartan collection. A promotional shot of the other figures in the Wave. Series 1, 343s down there, and Xbox. And then you see in the front, it's a nice window opening with the you know accessories there along the side. It says here on the side, Spartan Collection. The name in the front, UNSC on the top, Halo on the bottom. Includes a add game add on. As you see, it's in that card, but the game is not out yet because it was pushed back. Set one, Halo Infinite here on the side. Uh, because I believe this one is from Halo Infinite. And then the next figure we go to is none other than cat b320 same thing open window box and the side it says halo infinite it has even a symbol of unsa and the side with a little picture there of the character uh, in the back there is a promotional shot of cat with her human portrait there you see as you see there and she's part of wave one as, as well then we have the spartan mk5 and then it says eight or b right and same thing same continuous uh, aesthetic for each box at the top again turn it around and this is what his promotional shot looks like there you go still part of series one and next we have the man himself the master chief glorious Front again, by promotional shot, as you see there, of the figure looking really nice. There you go. And I'm trying to record this videos in 4K 60 frames per second for you guys, the viewer. Now, starting with one of the first figures from wave two we have here from wave two spartan gunner gun 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 here uh in the packaging as you can see still with that nice orange color and black that's what they look like the promotional shot in the back and then promotional shot of the other figures in the series in wave two or series two 
next we have the Spartan MK so it's 7 again B but this time he has a different color motif the promotional shot here and it comes with a promotional shot here and it comes with different accessories in this one and another you know promotional shot of the series and the wave um then we have here next we have uh Jerome and I believe Jerome is from Halo ODST I believe 092 and all his glory now one of the differences between the motif or the actual symbol here of UNS uh, UNSC is that this one is like in a nice um, like silver sheen to it like shiny sheen to it as and those from the original way for a matte finish and here is Jerome in his packaging same thing Halo and in this one you see it doesn't say infinite because he's not from infinite um, it would have been a nice touch if they put the actual games each of these characters were from but in this case they don't they don't and then another added detail to the packaging that's different is that in the bubble blister it has tampoed you see there you know it says U N S C the top is still the same um, just trying to look for subtle differences and that's pretty much it but uh, as far as the differences go and one more thing you'll notice with these guys and the second wave is there we have uh, Mr. Emil A239 Here's a promotional shot of Emil there in all of his glory. And the promotional shot of the actual second wave. And here he is Emil within the packaging himself. And Emil, I believe, is from Halo Reach. Uh, and it doesn't say it there. As you see, or anywhere within the box itself. There's nowhere to say that he's from Reach. Um, so, yeah. So there we have it. That is the characters we're going to take a look at. And all of their glory. Let's take them out of the packaging. And first, take a look at it by wave. So I'll take a look first at wave 1. Then we'll take a look at wave 2. And see what's the differences from wave 1. Jumping into wave 2. Because I believe there is some subtle differences like in the quality of the joints, uh, move mobility, um, the range, uh, as far as what I've heard so far within the figure community. So sit back guys, relax, have a cup of digital drink, whether it's coffee, whether it's a beer, whether it's some Kool-Aid, whatever it is, uh, you know it's your choice because it's your world. And, and come with me for the ride and see what these figures have to offer. Taking them out of box and looking at them one by one a little closer. So sit back and I'll be back with you in maybe a blink of an eye. So first we'll start here with none other than the Spartan MK8 or 7, right? Uh, she is or he is in the red motif. The, you know, Spartans here share a lot of parts. They're very similar. Um, the real difference is they is in the color of the visors and, and the weapons that they bring. Um, and some subtleties here and there with some of the panels in their armor. So, as we take a closer look, um, they're very similar. A lot of different ways. In this case, you see that, you know, has a beautiful metallic vac metal look in gold on the visor with the blacks and with the reds and a lot of nice weathering and scuff marks on the figure as if they were battle torn or battle worn from many battles as you see in the back area, back back, 
know what this is. This is the black area. The arm, shoulder pads. Um, you know, uh, arm gauntlet. Arm gauntlet. Gloves, bicep area. Shoulder pads. And, uh, you know, obviously the chest. Torso, waist. By the belt, groin. Pads on the thighs. On the knees. On the shin guard area of the legs and obviously in the foot area which would be the boots and they look really nice they're painted really nice and to be honest with the camera for some reason um it's coming off like maybe like a orangey color but it's really more of a muted red but it looks really nice it stands out really nice in front of the person the visor itself there it looks like it has like, uh, like if it had white dirt on it and it's not even like that um, you know it's hard to you know understand why the color cor co corrections and differences come in like right there the, with the background the colors look more accurate but they look really good and they feel nice and solid so that's the look first at the Spartan MK8. And here we have Kat, obviously, and she is, uh, I believe it's 8320. Um, and she basically, this Spartan is a she, you can tell because she has more of a female built, even though it has still that Spartan look. And she is um, pretty different as far as the plates and the armory goes. Um, as we'll take her off and take a closer look at her. Uh, the subtleties are obviously in the helmet. Her visor being a nice metallic chrome with looking vac metal. She has a, you know, uh, contraption of a, like some type of a, <clears throat> of a ray or some type of a light or camera on the side with the blues and the grays and then you know the, the symbol of the US, UNSR uh, UNSC here on the top um, different design in the front with some white patterns on there and the gray which is dark gray and then the light gray as you see there in some areas like the shin guard of the form and then in her case She's missing an arm, she lost in battle, and it was replaced with a robotic arm. And she even has a plate there, and the plates in the hand and the wrist. And then you notice that the crotch area is more of a V-shaped cut for the female anatomy. And her front part of her plate looks like she has a breast. Um, you know, and there's some pockets here on the side, which is a new sculpt, part of the sculpt, sculpt design. White patterns there, gray um, knee pads, gray shin guards on the on the uh, legs, and then obviously on the boot area, and you have some grays and light grays. And if you turn it around, same thing, and you see the weathering. Scratch battle stars and then the pouch there in the back in the buttocks area and she has a more pronounced buttocks uh, to give her a more elegant female look um, We'll get to this later. I'm just putting it back in So you guys can see what it does and why it does that and why it's like that in design um, Oh boy, here we go Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, there we go. So, there is Cat. Let's put it back on the spinning spinner here. Now on to the next Spartan. And here we have the white Spartan MK5B. Uh, another elegant looking Spartan in color. And style and aesthetic and we'll take them off here 
of the spinner and take a closer look and you'll see again we'll start off with the portrait in the face in the mask has a very nice chrome uh, chrome metallic back metal on this on, on the visor has a great uh, plate on the top even though you know they look similar they're very different in the helmet area and design has the two, you know, apparatus that look like breathing things in the front. Uh, the chest plate, I believe, is very similar to the other Spartan, uh, the red Spartan, but still very different. Shoulder pants. Uh, there's no real color of plates on his hand by the wrist area on the top, on the biceps and the crotch area, uh, very different also, um, it's a lot like the cat area, but even though this is still a uh, male, the panels on the side with the whites again, the differences in the knee pad as you can see and his Shin guard, which looks like a whole piece, which is a boot going down to the feet or foot area, all in a nice grayish, darker grayish look in the back as well. And in the back of the helmet, a lot of fine little details uh, within the this figures themselves. And again, this feels very nice and sturdy and, and kind of heavy. Uh, so there is a look at the uh, Spartan MK5B. And here we have the last figure in the series. A man that doesn't need, or a figure that doesn't need any introduction. The man himself, the Master Chief. And as you can see, he's there in all of his glory with the traditional classic uh, green that looks very um uh kind of olivey but with a little brightness to it it's not really like a neon green uh like a lot of times people think and believe uh it's very low tone muted but with a nice uh vibrancy of of that color that looks kind of like an olive but very nice and greenish and he looks really really nice as well uh, with a lot of nice subtle details as you can see there uh, he has a wonderful gold plated back metal visor with his little lights there the apparatus of breathing kind of like the little sun visor put, uh, on top of the helmet you can see the weathering and details in the backpack area on the shoulders, it says there, 117, uh, which is his marquee number, like the 007 for James Bond. You see his armor. Uh, very par to, to the course, uh, but different as well. Like this piece is different than the others. And the middle torso. The design there looks very detailed, but in a matte finish. His hands, the plates, the shin guards on uh, forearm shin guards, biceps, plates on the side of his hips. Then obviously the knee pad with the rest of the boot going down. Um, with his distinctive foot boots at the, at the very bottom. And he feels very sturdy as well. Very nice and it has a nice weight to it. Um, and to be honest, uh, you know, looks really, really, really fabulous with all these levels of details. Now mind you, remember these figures are only uh, $20 figures in retail shelves. So, I think the, with the level of detail and the articulation and even the accessories they go with with interchangeable hands, um, these are really uh, a nice um, p 
piece of uh, 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 of uh, you know artistry and, and it really shows and and, and, and the figure and, and, and the value is absolutely there for that price point. So now let's uh, move right along onto the first figure from Wave Two. And here we have the Spartan MK5 B alternate costume or alternate, you know, uh, deco, color deco. And I could already tell you from feeling the figure from the first wave to this one in the new wave that uh, there has been some changes and there has been improvements. Um, which we'll discuss later in the review uh, and the overlook when we look at, you know, the articulation and and some of the other things that the figure offers or has to offer. And in this one, they, they try to change it up, but a lot of the joints uh, are, are very tight. But you can still give them, like, poses. As you can see, I, I tried to have them in a pose. Um, which I did uh, on the uh, spinner. So you see that it's a gold with a light gray on top, light gray there, with the kind of neon green. This is definitely more neon. And then the black on the rest of the helmet. But a lot of fine details. Uh, the uh, actual, you know, armor itself is exactly like the white one, uh, just with the different color decos and it's amazing how the color deco alone with the changes of some of the uh, uh, weapons right that they bring as well the figure looks like a very different figure grays the neon green there uh, the same you know uh, over protruding kind of knee pads but looking very you know spartan-esque the shin guards on the legs right and then obviously the actual uh boots and the feet area itself this keeps popping out because it needs some glue to stay on but that's okay so it looks good and then in the back as well it looks good um Regardless, so let's put them back here on the spinner as like so. Stand it up. Let's stand it up. Let's stand them up. Let's stand them up. Back on the spinner like so, like he's walking. Uh oh, like he's walking. And we'll move right along and look at the second figure in the wave. Okay, guys, and here we have our next character, which we all know. He's from Halo Reach, and he is uh, none other than, oh my god, my bad, my bad, sorry guys, none other than Jerome092. And this figure here. Uh, looks really, really, absolutely stunning. Uh, in, you know, aesthetically, uh, just looks really good. Let's take him out and get a closer look, as you will see. And the first thing you'll notice is his wonderful uh, visor. As you can see in that vac metal gold, he has the 902, I mean 092 there. Again, with the red military stripe over the head, you see all of the scuffing, and he has the little vent there, the lights on the side, these little pauldrons on the side there, on the on the shoulder pad, you know, on the upper shoulder, his shoulder pads, and he has a nice metal military green, um, you know. Uh, these figures look really good. Um, the main issue is that even though they look aesthetically good, uh, the, the 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 articulation 
um, is where they kind of lack. Here's another detail with the Spartan there. It's a, a, in the shoulder pad. Again, um, the forearm guard, the bicep, the gloves, the uh, crotch area, the stomach, the guards here on his thighs, knee pads, the shin guards on the legs, and on the foot, the boots. Really cool, and then from the back, you can see also a little detail the weathering battle scar from being in wars and battle, and a nice fat metal silver. So let's put them here, and uh, yeah, it looks great. Now, let's take a look at the next figure. And next we have here on the list, we have none other than the Spartan Gunner. I think it's called Gunner, but it's spelled Gunner. Uh, so, I mean, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, especially the you know, real Halo purist and enthusiastic, enthusiast rather. Uh, because I love Halo, but I really don't know the Spartan names by suits or, or by rank. The way they, you know, the way, the way they are, uh, especially because I don't play online the multiplayer, so you get more familiar with with the multiplayer. And you see that this is an orange color for the Spartan. Take a closer look, and uh, you see how it's a, a face-looking type of uh, mask with green eyes. But he also wears another shield on top of this, uh, which is an accessory. You see the blacks with the grays and the highlights there uh, with the orange, the, the, the motif, and the, in the actual, um, you know, uh, the actual temp, you know, uh, as, uh, deco is really nice with the grays and the, and the orange. Uh, really stand out, really nice. Um, nice usage of the same armor, but because the colors are nice and vibrant it still stands out he has some type of grenades here on the side uh, you see his orange there painted on his uh, the top plate of his of his uh, hand by the wrist area and the, by the plates here in the thigh the, the knee pads the shin guards with the blacks there and then the boots and then you turn it around is it, and you see he has the backpack very similar to uh, Master Chief himself. The plate in the back and the buttocks area and then all this black suiting in the inside. It looks almost like an endoskeleton suit. It's all in a, in a nice matte black. Uh, and he's from Wave 2, obviously. So there is the uh, Spartan gun near or gunner so let's take a look at the last figure in wave two so here we have guys probably what would be maybe the considered the best figure of wave two the one i feel might be the most sought after figure of wave two and also because he's um you know a pretty badass character in the halo reach game and that is none other than emil a239 and he's just a big bulky heavy uh, character and you know in, in the game he's pretty badass looking and his design even though they used a lot of the same parts they they were able to put a lot of little overlays on top of it with details of Emil to make it look pretty different substantially different it's very different in his own right and you see that his mask right off the back of his helmet with that indentation of the skeleton and silver on the yellow visor on top it's pretty sick and pretty accurate with the little light inside with the shin guard piece 
looks pretty menacing uh, and very accurate to the character. And he has the actual belt coming down. It looks almost unlike a uh, uh, bulletproof vest belt, but it has nothing but bumps of bombs and grenades and smoke bombs, stuff like that. He's got this nice, unique, uh, you know, silver plates, uh, rings that go over his biceps, um, the gray on the shin, you know, forearm. And he has kind of like that teal, the gray and gray plates in the hands, like a greenish. It's kind of like a green. On the camera, it comes out like green, but in real life, it still looks, or in person, it still looks kind of grayish. As you see there, the shoulder pad has the sheath for the knife. Painted in white, looks really good. A strip of shotgun shells on the forearm you know, guard, painted in red as well. As you see. And then the belt with all those grenades. This looks really good. Ouch! And brown. He's died and he has a splash of like, marking in red. The boots, obviously. Shin guards, the knees. And then the foot and the foot plates. That looks really good. So he looks pretty badass. You turn him around. And you see there. All the details. And then the suits. And uh, you gotta, uh, let, just to let you guys know that these figures are retailed at $20 from Wicked Cool Toys. And they come with a pretty nice amount of accessories. So, now what we'll do is we'll look at each of them, uh, what accessories they all bring. And then take a look at their articulation. So here we have all the Spartans. Uh, side by side with their accessories. So we'll start off with Cat, and as you know, Cat comes with the uh, Spartan uh, M6V laser or Spartan laser. You see, very detailed, very nicely painted. It's a nice rubbery material, but it looks really good. She also comes with the uh, M6G Magnum Pistol, as you see, with the blacks and the grays. Her helmet, as you can see, which is removable. And then she comes with six sets of hands, or three sets of hands, six hands all together. These two open hands. And we have here one hand that looks like she's pointing, saluting, and then a closed fisted hand. So that's what Cat comes with. <clears throat> Moving right along, we have Master Chief himself, and he comes with the classic MA40, right? Assault rifle. And you see he's really nicely painted as well with the blacks and the grays. A lot of details in the sculpting. And he also comes um, with the MK50 Sidekick Pistol, which is a little smaller. And the greens and the blacks paint it really nice. And then he also comes with uh, six set of hands, no, actually three sets of hands and one extra, so seven hands all together. Here's the closed fisted ones. He has two pointy ones on 
camp right now. Uh, the two open screen ones that kind of look like uh, hands where you're trying to tell someone to to hold and then paint it on the top and the plate as you see matches the you know the color of his uh, Spartan suit and then with this one that's kind of like pointing his fingers at a certain direction then next we have a meal right and a meal comes with the M45 shotgun Nicely painted with light grays and darker grays, a lot of detail. No movement other than the peg there to display with. And he comes with his, they call it Kakuri knife or Kakuri knife. A nice dark gray and kind of that boomerang bend. And then, you know, the actual hilt in brown. Uh, then again, he also comes with six hands, three sets of hands. The Holt hands, painted in gray. He has two trigger finger hands. And his last set is one hand like he's pointing. Uh, to give commands and the other a closed fist as well so there's uh, Emil's accessory and now uh, Jerome's accessory he comes with the M90 shotgun blacks and the grays painted really well as you see really nice black matte so he comes with that then he also comes with the uh, I believe it's the um, M6G Magnum pistol also looks a little different than all the other ones with the nice metallic green on it which looks really 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 uh, nice and elegant and you have again the same thing uh, he comes with se seven hands the three sets of hands this is the open ones right there Uh, he comes with uh, two triggers that he has on. He comes with one that's pointing. And again, he comes with two that are closed fisted hands. And moving right along, we have next the Spartan MK5B white version and he comes over here with a wonderful wonderful uh, um, it's called the uh, VK78 commando rifle as you see there really nice with the greens and the grays and obviously you'll see it has uh, some black like gunmetal black on it painted he also comes with the classic uh, plasma pistol. Mm, here we go. Plasma pistol. Plasma with the grays and the purples. Looking really nice in detail. He also comes with a set of six, a set of three, and seven hands all together. So he has the two fisted hands like so then he has the two open splayed hands 
like calling for halt. Right? And then he has uh, one that's saluting. It's a salute, like a karate chop, but it's a salute. And then the two trigger fingers or trigger hands. Then next we have the Spartium, Spartan NK7, which comes with the CQS 48 Bulldog. And that is here right there. It's like a sh silencer shotgun or a pistol at the same time. See the gun clip there with the blacks. The grays, really nice. See? with the holder in here in the front handle rather then he comes with the disruptor pistol which this looks like it's something newer this is all gray you got some type of wrapping on the handle or not. but it, it doesn't uh, you know it's not painted it's just all I'm not gray with a lot of nice detail those are the laser pistol and then each this part comes with uh, seven hands all together. Three are, you know, a set. So six, three sets, seven hands all together. Here is the closed fisted hands. Comes with two trigger hands. Which one is on? As you can see, one of the trigger hands right there. Oh, and then it comes with two. Uh, open splayed hands like coin for home and then another flat karate chop looking hand but it's really a salute hand a salute hand and then we have uh, the Spartan MK5B neon green edition as you know and he comes with a classic energy sword. And you see one side here. It's painted, uh, it's like a translucent, kind of bluish. And it's painted with the purple on top. Oh, nice details in yellow and white. It looks like electricity. But the other side is not painted. And then the handle is it's painted in that gray. And he also comes with a gun or pistol that looks very much like a disrupt disruptor as well. Again, with no painting on the straps on the handle. Just a little bit of gray here and light with uh, uh, the uh, other gray, as you see there, in, in like a darker shade of gray. He comes with seven hands as well three are sets and this is the closed fisted ones and he comes with he comes with two or uh, one at least that is uh, kind of like the stop and hold hand he comes with two pointing figure triggers and one closed fisted trigger hand and one salute karate chop. So he has four hands that are different and two that are the same which are the closed fisted as a set basically. That's what you know again. Um so here, last but certainly not least, the Spartan Veneer or Gunner because of the M41 Spurt Rocket Launcher, which is this big bad boy right here. As you see. Got some highlights of orange there. It's really nice in detail, but mainly uh, a solid light 
pretty color. Detail there, it's just perked right on it, you can see it. Or this pink, as you can see. That's kind of cool, that detail. Then he comes with, he actually comes with another um, MK50 sidekick piston with the black again and the, the greens with really nice detail as you can see it comes with uh, you know additional visor for his face with the gunmetal gray and that greenish he comes also with, uh, you know, what we call uh, one, two. He comes with seven hands and three are sets of this time around. The orange is too colored on it. This is the fifth hand. He has. Two trigger hands on him, as you can see right there. Two trigger hands on him. And then he has the two salute hands. I'm kind of calling out for others. Or like, if it was Jedi, I'd be like, Oof. the force hand. <laughs> and then he comes kind of on him open trigger kind of pointing and so they're really detailed as you see right here they're all very very detailed all that detail on them so yeah so that is the accessories that they all come with now let's look at the articulation for some of them because since they're all using a lot of main parts the articulation is kind of uh, par for the course for kind of all of them with the exception of just a few uh, so let's take a look at their articulation so again here we have them and let's take a look at the articulation now the biggest problem with these figures is aesthetically they look absolutely stunning they look really really good uh, the paint work the clean, the clean look of the paint job the details, the, the visors, everything looked spectacular. But there was also a distinguish, this dif, distinguish difference between Wave 1 and Wave 2 as far as joints being tight, others being loose. Um, and a lot of that exists here. So there's a lot of like QC issues in the first wave that they kind of fixed in the second wave, but in the second wave they kind of did too much where some of the limbs don't even move correctly because they're too tight. Uh, and these are like the three or the six main different body types that are different. They have little subtleties. So I'll show you just a few. For the articulation, you know, in Master Chief, the head, he looks down that much. He looks up that much. And then he can look side to side. The shoulders go up like this. But when I first did it, this ripped off and I had to actually glue it. He has what you would see is like, you know, that butterfly joint. He does have, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the bicep swivel there on the top part. It's kind of hard to see, but he does have it, as you can see, come move. And he does a, has a double elbow. It goes up pretty, pretty much the same. A single peg on the wrist. It goes in and out and hinges, as you can see, and it has the rotation. Then he has the torso twist, and you can move, barely move back and forth, as you can see. Or, and then he has a little bit of pivot that can go, you know, left and right, the split. He can split his legs uh, like this much. Move the leg forward like that. Um, back just a bit. 
He has a thigh swivel, um, a double in the knee, and then you know, in the in the foot is a, a pivot forward pivot rocker. The actual toe pivot goes forward that much, back that much, forward that much, and you know, uh, you can move left, you know, left, left and right with the thigh because there's no boot cut. There's no boot cut. Excuse me. So you know, she, they he moves okay, but just in the torso area, he can't really move well so you're not gonna be able to get them in a lot of dynamic range poses but then if you go to somebody like let's say like Jerome which looks you know fabulous looks great but this is so tight on the way they sculpted that there's barely any movement like you can't even move them it's just nothing there As you can see back maybe a little but you can't move nothing forward and then you know he kind of moves left and right but he has no you know no pivot side to side you know he has a, a butterfly but it's less you know obviously the bicep swivel they have there a bicep swivel and he moves ahead pretty good as well as you can see but no you know no tip head tilt and then the swivel there but he doesn't do the split as much. For example, you know, with, because of this type of arm, and just to give you a little idea, and then somebody like Jerome looks a little thicker, you know, same thing, but when you move him, again, there's barely any torso movement. The shoulders move really good because he doesn't really have the, you know, the shoulder pad. But he has, you know, the the swivel there too, and the leg area is good. But he does the split kind of okay. But again, there's no tilt. You know, a little bit of tilt. There's no forward and backwards that much at all. You know, and he kicks up like a good amount. He can't really kick back. You know, just a little subtle differences, so you guys can see based on the suits. Um. Uh, again here with the uh, with the mark like he moves he has a nice you know in this case he can move like that and you know it's kind of the torso twisted uh no and you know and then you know the, the, the back back forth he has a little bit better range for the style of the suit and then the, the pivot with the legs, you can see, can't move up as much because this right here, you know, hits this here because of the way of the design. And then this happens, the legs, you know, they'll pop off. And they're very loose in the arms. But, but it has the butterfly and the thigh, or bicep swivel rather, uh, as you can see. Um, then la uh, the last two, uh, somebody like Cat sees the same way as a Spartan, uh, Mark, you know, with Cat here. Uh, but the only thing Cat says she has this type of arm, she just can move forward, back. She has no bicep swivel, only has one single on the hinge that goes up on the elbow right and then you know obviously the uh, the wrist but that's because the arm is a robotic arm uh, but she does have it on this side and she even has the butterfly here but on this side the butterfly is does not move and then obviously her human head and portrait and she moves okay in the waist as well on torso area she has a better range of movement she's like other style more feminine and slender and she does better splits as well uh, you know with no hindrance really so um you know she she has that that a little bit better range because of her body type 
job. But again, um, they all differ based on on the suits. Um, and then the last type of suit is over here, which is the you know, which is uh, like the gunner or whatever. The yeah, the gun, gun, gun here. Um, this right here, because the way that it is, he'll move there, right, on the torso. But he won't, then at the top, smooth, but it's kind of tight. It has like a clicking sound. It can move forward just a little bit, and then that happens, it pops. It can move, but it pops really easy. And even his hands pop in this one. Um, and, and, you know, the, the butterfly mechanism here, the hand pops out easily. So, But he has, you know, the same range of movement in the head and no tilt. And can do the split a little bit forward is like so and back a little bit. So... His bunny type again, and you could even you could even lift up in the shoulders, even though this pops out. But lift up in the shoulders and 180 degrees. So they have a nice amount of articulation, but because of the material they use for the, the plastic, that it's like a hard plastic, a harder plastic, um, it makes the articulation feel almost like it's gonna break like it's kind of cheap the plastic of the figure itself uh, so it's kind of scary to pose and they feel kind of brittle is what I, the best way I could describe it not to say that they are but they feel kind of brittle so you, you're always with that uh, attention and afraid that they might uh, uh, you know snap or break while you're trying to articulate them so you don't have a lot of range of, of dynamic posability. Even though they're heavy armor suits, they're not supposed to be dynamic, but you know, it's still nice to pose them up, which is very limited. Uh, so that's how the articulation works. So now I'll show you guys, show you guys all of them with their accessories on, and uh, we'll go from there. So here we have them next to the NECA Defenders of the Earth. Ming the Merciless and next to the WWF Legends from the uh, Elite Series uh, Retro Cloth Goods uh, Undertaker with his Phantom of the Opera style mask and as you see that both of these are in 7 inch scale and they are about the same size or a little bit under Master Chief and you see that gun ear Gunnier is also a little smaller compared to Master Chief. And here we have next to the Power Rangers Lightning Collection SPD Pink Ranger. And then the Hasbro Hasbro Pulse uh, G.I. Joe Classified Regal Colored Cobra Commander in blue. You know, be to both are in the six inch scale, so you see how different it is and the disparity in size. And here we have them next to the DC icons Mr. Miracle and the DC Direct Green Lantern. And again, seven inch scale, and this is like a five and a quarter inch. Uh, with the icons so there you have it now for my final thoughts all right guys so here we are and uh hopefully my final thoughts will be as honest and as straightforward as possible are these figures worth getting eh, yes and no it all depends on the type of collecting are. If you're just looking for really nice looking figures that look incredible, that have a really uh, wonderful, you know, paint job and, and uh, you know, aesthetic look to the source material, 
Um, definitely. You'll definitely want to add them to your collection, especially if you're a Halo fan. Any Halo fan would love to have these in their hands or add them to their collection if they love Halo. If you're a, a, a Halo fan, a figure fan, and also, uh, you know, an enthusiast of collecting, and you like things a certain way, you might not like them because the material that they use, the plastic, is very hard. It almost feels kind of brittle. So it's it almost, it, it's scary because it feels like it might break on you. Um, and because of this, um, the articulation is either very limpy, weak, or not too great. So you can't really pose them in dynamic ranges. And, you know, to be honest, it's kind of a give or take because they're only $20 figures to begin with. So for $20, with the accessories they come with, the extra hands, and even in some cases like Cat, the extra, you know, uh, head portrait, it's still a good buy, still reasonable, and it's still a, a big bang for your buck. The, the paint job, like I said, and and the aesthetics and, 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 and sculpting are phenomenal. Uh, but if you're into, like, really high articulating, posing, and things like that, that you might not like these figures at all. That That's my take on it. For me, uh, I don't don't really know if I want to keep them because I really like the playetic style of the ones from Mattel, even though they don't look this good because the visors alone with that chrome uh, coloring and vac metal look, they look incredible, just that alone. So with, for me, I don't know... Uh, if they're doing it for me, right? And then also these are eight inch or seven inch scale. That's another thing. If you're a six inch guy only, and you don't, you know, you might not like it. But if you're a guy that don't care about scalability, you just like representation, then that won't bother you. Um, so for me, it's kind. Of, I'm kind of in the fence right now. I don't think I'm probably gonna keep them. I'm probably gonna sell them um, because of the fact that I have the the ones from Mattel that you can, you know, they're modular. Modular. You can put the you know, uh, the suits on and off, and they have really good articulation and nice accessories and weapons of that nature. So that's my thoughts, and that's what I can think about it, and that's my honest opinion, guys. So leave a thumbs up if you like the review, leave a thumbs down if you didn't like. I know this one went a little bit long, but remember, it's two ways, and I try to be as coherent and detailed as possible. Share this video with someone you think might like it. For all those who came back and gave me support like you always do and they have been from the very beginning, thank you so much because I'm oh, without you, it's n I'm not uh, possible and neither is my channel. And for all you that stopped by for the first time, hey, thank you for stopping by. Welcome. And I hope you enjoyed the content. And if you did, I, you know, I, I would uh, urge you and I would uh, ask you to please subscribe because if you do, uh, I think you won't be disappointed. But remember, if you did subscribe, uh, I know it means, the, it means the world to me because I know you didn't have to. But for me, now I consider you part of my family. As always, you can find me on social media, on Twitter, under Ebot Powerful Gamer, on Instagram, under C underscore Respect. On, uh, and also, uh, if you guys ever in any way, shape, or form, because you like what I do as far as this content, this right here being video game related or with figures as well or just video game in general or pop culture um and you want to help me out any way to build my channel up or help it grow you know how to do it it's all down in the description below and um if you ever want to donate anything maybe that you want me to look at maybe a, a review um it would be an honor and you know uh, i would be more than humbled to do so uh just hit me up on one of those social medias on dm and we'll work out the particulars. So, guys, this is Hebot, your host, signing off with another Toys in My Closet unboxing and uh, figure review of the latest and new uh, Halo, the Spartan Collection, Wicked Cool Toys from Jazzware, 7 inch scale figures. As always, guys. Keep collecting, have fun doing it, but make sure that you do it under consideration to others. We're still in trying times, and we, you know, we need to unite to make things better for the future. See you guys. This has been a Misala Productions presentation. Until the next one. Love you, and bye-bye.